me, Hao Ma. Today, we're going back to basics and back in time as we sample some delicious new recipes inspired by one of the world's oldest culture. Who did not have this advantage of this beautiful modern refrigerator? Everybody have this. We'll be cooking big black bean catfish. You can use any fish. Swiss char with black bean sauce and fish fried rice with a little bit of black bean. Everything is black bean today. Now, here is a little bit of catfish. I'm gonna woo, get this ready. Nice, fresh catfish, okay? And the way to do it is, I'm gonna use the same piece of catfish to do two dishes. The big ones, I slice it, big pieces like this, okay? Then I can put it over here, big pieces for baking, okay? We're gonna put this over here. And then a smaller piece, I'm gonna cut it up for fried rice. That's how you use it. Just like chicken, you cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut up seesaw motion. Put this back and then transfer all of these together like this. And then I'm gonna put this at the back here. The way to do it is make sure you get ready the sauce, okay? Now, everybody take a look at this. Without the black bean, you cannot make the big black bean catfish. When you go to the store, when you are eating Cuban or South Central American food, or Mexican food, you see a lot of black beans. This is black bean. This is the black bean, similar to soybean, but it's called wu dao. They say wu dao. Wu dao. Wu means black. Ha dao. Ha dao. Dao is bean. Wu and ha means black. Feel the texture. It doesn't pass around and feel the texture and smell, it's nothing. And then you can buy a package like this or a can like this. It's called fermented black bean. We open it up, this is fermented for about six months with salt and sometimes tangerine peel and also five spice powder and ginger. Smells very, very different. This is fermented black bean, sometimes it's called, it's called salted black bean. We call Tao Si. Tao Si, yes. And then, or if you don't have time to do it, you can buy a little jar of this already made for you. Now, when you use black bean, this is how you do it. You rinse this, rinse this with water. Oh, rinse this with water, and then you use your knife to crush it. You see, this is how functional this knife is. You crush it. Why do you crush the black bean? You want to release the flavor. That's the reason why you lightly crush it. And then you can make the sauce, okay? You can make, put the, you can make it your own, or you can just get this little jar out of here. You see this? Mix, sure. And then put a tiny bit of sugar, or put it over here so everybody can see. Put a tiny bit of wine. Mm. And then a tiny bit of sesame seed oil. Ah, look at this. Make sure. This is gonna be really nice. I'm gonna pass it on to the other side and let you smell it, okay? Because it smells so good. The whole studio smell. Mm, look at this. Smells very good. Is that nice? Very nice. Is that nice? The great thing about this is you can make this and prepare this ahead of time and put it back in a jar and put it in the fridge for approximately, huh? you know what? Put a, a lot of, almost, you know how long? Almost half a month to two months. And then we're gonna marinate all of these. Ah, look at this. We're gonna marinate this. If you want more wine, hey, no bar problem. This is what I like. More wine, ah. And then we'll marinate the fish, and let it marinate. Let it marinate. In the meantime, why I'm marinating my black bean catfish, I am going to show everybody. I'm going to cut up some onion. I'm going to saute the onion. I'm going to put the onion into the baking dish, you see? And then you go. Ah, look at this. When you cut onion, make sure you cut, push the blade against your knuckle. Never, never raise your knife higher than your knuckle unless you want to quit cooking. And then when you cut, make sure you are right-handed. Only move your left hand towards the left. Never move to the right. And then towards the end, you cannot hold on to it. Then you push it down and you go. Oh, see that? It's all nice and done. We're gonna saute this onion, okay? We'll put them all together because I need a lot of onion. We're gonna saute the onion, put it right here. Tiny bit of oil, okay? Make sure, 
saute spatula. This my knife is a spatula. Ha! Huh? Look at that. Very fast. And then we toss, 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 toss one tossing this. You know what? Next, we'll take a trip to the place that has inspired this quick and easy meal. The onion smells very good because when onion is saute or grilled, it's very sweet. I'm getting my onion ready for the big black bean catfish. I'll put them over here. You know what? Because I want the, fla the flavor of these to flavor my catfish, and I don't want my catfish stuck to the plate. And that's the reason why. I'm going to put this over here. I'm going to put this over here. Line them all up. This is marinade for almost 20 minutes. Okay? And this is really quick and easy because everything I do is so quick and easy. You cannot believe it. But I want to save these to make a sauce. I don't want to kill this because today's menu, see, when this is done, I'm going to put this right over there and bake at 350 to 375 degrees. Ah, let it bake. Oh, looking good. Today's menu is dedicated to the grace and simple style of Taiwan's first inhabitants whose ancestors still take their inspiration from the land and sea around them. These beautiful people are the original Taiwanese the indigenous tribal people who were here before anyone else arrived and who still make up about 2% of the population. There are 10 tribes in Taiwan, each one with its own distinctive tradition, dialects, arts and music, and of course food. To get to know them a little bit better, I decided to head for the hills way up in Taiwan's central highlands, almost a mile and a half above sea level. I'm in Ali San, one of the most scenic spots in Taiwan. I'm going to go to visit some of the Aboriginal people here, the Zhou Tribal Village. Follow me. It is our lucky day. The whole village is celebrating in a traditional tribal festival, and they have invited me to join them in the fun. Between the dancing and the mountain air, hey, I woke up an enormous appetite. Now I'm part of the tribal members. The grass, the nickname, the, the grasshopper tribe. Oh, there's a lot of grasshopper here. Oh, these are the Ali San tribal specialty. Wild ball, marinated barbecue wild ball, sausage with wild ball, and stuffed rice in a bamboo, stuffed glutinous rice in a bamboo. And also spring chicken, little baby spring chicken like this. This is truly free range. Mm, let me learn how to crack one of these. And then you open it up. Look at this. Whoa, beautiful glutinous rice, meat and spices. Oh, I can eat 14 of these. It is so good. Mm, okay, this is ready. This is wild ball, marinated. And then I'm going to barbecue it for approximately 45 to 50 minutes. We're going to cut it up right here. The Zhou tribe here in Ali San, beautiful Ali San, they live off the land. You know, they pick up, they hunt for the wild boar, humongous sausage like this, and also freshwater fish right here. Oh, not only all of these are cooked and barbecued over an open pit, but also they're being smoked. I am so emotional and it smells so good that I don't even have to open my eyes. Ah, this is grasshopper. I feel it. The wire is coming out. I just move it. Ah, I have never done this before. Cook with your eyes closed. Ah. Now it is time to share a meal with the tribal elders who invited me to the meeting house for more feasting. We're having a little outdoor picnic here. Actually, this is a typical meal. They make use of the land. 
Everything is from nature around here. Mmm, delicious meal. This is smoked barbecue spring chicken. Mmm, free range. These tribal people know that living off the land is not a one-way street. You can't just consume all the time. You also have to protect and respect the environment. In fact, they are the original environmentalists. Thousands of these fishes, tempting, but no fishing here. These are endangered species, need to be protected. Actually, the aboriginal people here, they protect this so we can all enjoy looking at this beautiful fish. Around here, ecology is nothing new. For thousands of years, it has been a natural part of the dance of everyday life. To me, these tribal people are real inspiration. We can all learn a lot from the beauty and the wisdom of their way of life. It fits me perfectly. This is actually a gift from the tribal elders. Now I'm an honorary tribe member. While the catfish is baking, I'm gonna make Swiss chard with black bean garlic sauce. I love black bean so much. How many of you like black bean or have used black bean? And use black bean every day? I have. You have? Jay, please come. You know, since Jay loved black bean, now, do you like, how many of you also use uh, freshwater chestnut? For quick and easy, you can always buy the canned water chestnut and you just open the can. That's quick and easy. But a lot of people don't realize fresh water chestnut is actually, look at this beautiful. Fresh water chestnut, look how beautiful this is. And when you peel water chestnut, this is why, as you do, not only you love black bean sauce, but I also need somebody to help me out because I want to show you, we can remove these. This is how you cut water chestnut fresh. After that, you use your knife and you just peel this, peel this, and peel this and after that you just cut it into thin slices and then be, in fact we're gonna we should cut enough for our Swiss chart okay okay and then also you can cut it either this way or you can cut it this way I need approximately five to six water chestnut okay in okay. the meantime let's put them all here do me a favor and I give you in the meantime I'm gonna go to the fridge and get my Swiss chart you like Swiss chard, Jay? I love it. Good. I'm gonna get some Swiss chard right over here. I have some, oh, in fact, you can use any vegetable, any leafy vegetable. You know what, look at how beautiful this is. You can use Swiss chard, you can use spinach. Can you use bok choy? You can use bok choy, baby bok choy. You can use gai choy, this is gai choy. This is Chinese mustard, okay? That means you can use anything. In fact, even use uh, pea shoot. Oh, okay. oh, yes, very good. Now, this is good. You know why I like this? This is nice and sweet. It got a natural sweetness. I cut it up and cut it up and I cut it up and I cut it up. I, when I was growing up, I eat a lot of these. And I'm going to get this ready and make sure we're going to get ready to stir fry this. Let's put this right over here. How are you doing, Jay? I'm good. Can good. I taste them? Of course, taste them. In fact, taste them. Okay. Mmm. It's so good. It's marvelous. Mmm, it's really refreshing. Nice and refreshing and sweet. I'm going to show it to you both. Taste it. It's so good. Taste it and tell me how much you like it better than the canned one. It's much better. It's good? Yeah. Very good. Hey, finish it up. You like it so much. Might as well finish it up. In the meantime, I'm going to cut this. More Swiss chard. How many of you like Swiss chard? Huh? Very good. This is virtually a lot of people, you know, in French cuisine, they use a lot of these. Oh. In China, when I was growing up, I eat a lot of these. And in Chinese, it's called chi choy, because it grows very, very fast, okay? And then when this is all nice and ready, you know why I use, we use water chestnut? Because water chestnut gives that nice texture contrast, mm -hmm. okay? And then, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up. This is so much better. So, we're gonna quickly show you how easy it is to do this, because Swiss chard, with black bean garlic sauce. You gotta have some black bean and have some garlic. Otherwise, why the heck are you gonna have garlic sauce? Here, once again, we're gonna peel this leg. Little over here, the whole thing comes out like that. And then, once again, hey, minced garlic. Hey, 
minced garlic, and then we are going to get ready to cook how is that sound? Huh? Now here you have this dish is actually very easy. Okay, put a tiny bit of these oil right here. A lot of garlic. Garlic goes really well with this because I'm going to do Swiss chard with black bean garlic sauce. In the meantime, my big black bean catfish is right over there being cooked. Ah, look at this. Very nice. And this is good. <clears throat> How are you doing, Jay? Excellent. Almost Very done. Good. Oh, almost done. And then in the meantime, I'm going to put extra, extra, because we know everybody loves this. I'm going to stir fry this, okay? We'll put this in. Put a tiny bit of these. Oh. Smells smell, delicious. Smells wonderful. Put a tiny bit of broth. Oh. And then you don't have to put the water chest in until the last minute because water chest doesn't take too long to cook. Okay. Ah, uh, Jay, yes. you know what? I have some garlic. Since you like garlic so much, why don't you mince the garlic for me? Also, in the meantime, I'm going to continue because everybody loves garlic. Garlic is not only the world's most popular seasoning and also a very, very healthy season because in many parts of the world, garlic is used as a medicine, you know? So when this is all getting ready and Jade is getting more garlic for me, more. Oh. Next, Jade and I are going to make another quick and easy dish that takes us back to the basics. Smells good. The big black bean catfish smells good. Everybody smell it? Mm -hmm. Smell, smell, <laughs> it's so good, it's amazing. In the meantime, I'm finishing up the Swiss chard with black bean sauce. Water chestnut give the texture contrast, color contrast. A tiny, tiny bit of oyster flavor sauce. A tiny, tiny bit of extra black bean sauce. And then, of course, flavor and balance the flavor with a tiny bit of sugar. And then, all you have to do is mix them all up. And look at this, this is a very, very nice family style quick dish. And then we're gonna transfer this and put it right here. And look how beautiful, this is very simple, very easy, everybody can do it. Look at this, ah, look at how beautiful. How does this look? It looks absolutely gorgeous. Great. And also, taste smells so good. And then do me a favor, you can put it over there. In the meantime, I want to show everybody how easy it is. You know what? You can also put a tiny bit of this sauce right on top of the catfish. Okay. In the meantime, you remember, I have some leftover fish, right? I'm going to have this to do a simple stir-fry rice. I cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, cut it up, set it aside, and put it right here. This is the fish, leftover catfish. And then we we'll marinate this with a tiny bit of oyster flavor sauce and a tiny bit of fish sauce. Ah, look at this. This way we can stir fry this. And also with some baby bok choy. You see, this, this is baby bok choy. And we cut this up and we go, ah. You know, in China, Jay, you know, when you go to Chinese restaurant, they also use bean sprout. They also use lettuce, right. very popular. But this, we use a tiny, tiny bit of ah, cilantro. And then the first thing we have to do is put a tiny bit of oil. Mmm, very simple. Put a tiny bit of fish, fish, fried rice. And the, whoa, it doesn't take too long to cook. Look at this. Let's Jay, come over and smell, this is so good. See this? Give me a tiny bit of rice. Oh, yes, yeah. Let's put the rice. Might as well put about this much in there, and then, now this is the trick when you do fried rice. Put a tiny bit of water or broth. Put a tiny bit of soy sauce. Ah, oh, you know what? This is all already very simple. If you like black bean, you like black bean, you know what? You can also use a tiny, tiny bit of black bean sauce to flavor it. That's all you have to do. Mwah. You smell it well? It smells delicious. It smells delicious. When this is all nice and done, mm, you know what? We're gonna serve these right over here. As I said, sometimes you go to a Chinese restaurant, a lot of time, they actually put bean sprout in the dish. Okay, look at this. This is so beautiful. 
Ah, look at this. Make sure you do this. And if you want to make it nice, hey, might as well put a tiny bit of chili. Ah, uh, the tiny bit of chili. Mmm. Beautiful. And then you come over here. Look at this. Here we have three wonderful dishes. Let's put one over here and one over here. Look at that. This is a dish that Jay and I have created. It is so easy to do. Everybody can smell the wonderful dish, right? Yeah. Remember, if Yan can cook modern meals that are tasty and timeless, so can you. Everybody, judge in. 